Hi, I'm Silvia Sebastián, a PhD student who works at the Mendea Software Institute of Madrid under the supervision of Juan Caballero. I'm going to present you AV Class 2, which is a tool for massive malware attack extraction from AV labels. There are services like VirusTotal or VirusShare, which contains millions of malware samples. From these services, we want to extract samples with different properties, like being ransomware, using a specific packer, a grayware, and other types of properties. These properties could be used as tags which index the samples. A good source of tags are the AV labels. There are some tools which operate with these AV labels. AV Class and Euphony take the AV labels and extract family tags from them. For instance, these tools will say that the sample with the label on the left is from the family All Apple. However, there is much more information encoded in the AV labels that we can extract. In this example, we could get that it is a worm operating in Windows. So with the purpose of extracting as much tags as we can from the AV labels, we developed AV class 2. It is an evolution of AV class, so it inherits some properties like being open source and automatic. AV class 2 is composed by two modules. The first one is the labeler, which receives AV labels as an input and it gives a list of tags. In order to extract the tags, it uses some tagging and expansion rules, but also taxonomy. The tool ships with default ones, so the analyst can use it out of the box. As malware evolves over time, the taxonomy and the tagging and expansion rules needs to be updated. So we developed a second module, which is able to automatically update them. Let's see the, these uh, taxonomy and tagging and expansion rules. By design, AV class 2 assumes that the input taxonomy is incomplete and will not contain all malware-related concepts. We believe that building a closed malware taxonomy that contains all malware-related concepts is a futile effort, as it is nearly impossible to be complete as malware continuously evolves, requiring constant updates to any taxonomy. Instead, a key property of AV class 2 is that it supports previously unknown concepts not yet in the tagging rules and taxonomy. AV class 2 provides a default taxonomy, which organizes concepts that commonly appear in AV labels. Since the default taxonomy is included in the open source release of AV class 2, users can share their updates collaboratively. Its structure relies in four categories, which contain the tags. The first one is behavior, which captures how the malware behaves. Behaviors manifest during a sample's execution. However, once encoded in an AV label, they can be extracted by AV class 2 without the need to execute the sample. Other category is class, which captures characteristics such as behaviors or distribution methods. File comprises static file properties like file type or operating system in which the sample operates. The fourth category is the family of the sample. If the AV label contains a tag which is not included in the taxonomy, we keep it as an unknown tag, since it could have valuable information. This way, tags are leaves under a category like phishing, or they are intermediate tags like mining, which is a behavior, but there is a more specific term, Bitcoin mining. For this reason, a tag can be also represented with its whole path in the taxonomy. Let's move on to the tagging rules. An AV label is divided in tokens. Those tokens need to be normalized and converted into tags. Tagging rules are used to specify the set of tags that a token will be replaced with. Most tagging rules map a token to a single tag. In this case, we say that the token is an alias for the tag, since it captures the same concept as the tag. Aliases enable identifying when different vendors use different tokens to capture the same concept. A tagging rule may also define that a token maps to multiple tags. If the token maps to multiple concepts, a tagging rule can also define that a token maps to an empty set of tags. We call such tokens generic because they do not provide useful information. Generic tokens are discarded during tagging. The expansion rules are optional. They define that a tag implies a set of other tags, where the original tag is included in the expanded set. Both inter- and intra-category expansion rules can be automatically identified by the update module. In addition, an analyst can provide AV class 2 with its own expansion rules based on domain knowledge. 
So if class 2 automatically extracts tags from AP labels that categorize malware samples according to their malware class, family, behaviors, and file properties. It uses and builds an open taxonomy that does not use a closed set of tags and thus can handle new tags introduced over time by AV vendors. It was evaluated on 42 million samples from 11 datasets and it is open source. This is the architecture of the labeler. In order to extract the tags of a sample, it needs to input a set of AV labels, like this one. So it starts the tokenization. Tokenization recognizes those noisy parts, letters and numbers at the end from all the parts which may contain sensitive information Bebek, RISC tool, and Bitcoin miner. Then it starts the tagging module, which takes the tokens one by one and converts them into tags thanks to the tagging rules. Finally, it starts the expansion, which again takes the tags one by one and gets related tag. Ex those extracted tags could be both intra category and extra category. When it finishes extracting tags of a label, it gets a novel one. When there are no more AV labels of a sample, it collects the tags in the output. To avoid noise, tags which appear only once on the AV labels are filtered out. Unknown tags are those that are currently in the taxonomy and they might contain valuable information. For this reason, we created a module which updates the taxonomy and the rules automatically. First of all, it receives a list of call occurrences. Those concurrences identify how many times tags appear with all the tags. Let's show this with a couple of examples. The table of the right shows that whenever Leopold is on the label, it appears at word two. This means that there is a strong relationship. Keep in mind that the order is important. Adware appears a lot of times without Leopold. This means that the relationship just works on one way. In the case of Downloader and Linux, both of them appear over 100 times, but just once together. This is a very weak relationship. Let's hear how co-occurrences update the taxonomy and the tagging and expansion rules. From the strong co-occurrences, we update this taxonomy and tagging and expansion rules. The most important rules are those that include new knowledge on the graph, that is, from unknown tags. Let's take, for instance, a rule that goes from an unknown to a behavior. It most likely means that it is a family like Gamania, which behaves as game thief. This rule includes Gamania as a new family in the taxonomy. An example of a rule which updates tagging is one of which is the one which goes from an unknown to a family. This means that the unknown is an alias of the family. For instance, from Xworm to Love Letter, this rule, which replaces Xworm by Love Letter, will be included in the tagging rules. There are updates in the expansion file too. One example is from a family to a class, like Leopold, which is an adware. After running the update module, the new rule from Leopold to adware could be included in the expansion rules. Let's move on to the evaluation. We evaluated the class 2 on 42 million samples from 11 datasets. The results show that a class 2 can extract at least one tag from 89% to 100% of samples, depending on the dataset. Thus, it is possible to index the majority of the samples. The files for which no tags can be extracted largely correspond to those with very few detections. When considering samples flagged by at least four AV engines, the fraction of tagged samples is at least 99%. As shown by the subset, the most common tags are file properties, followed by malware classes, known families and behaviors. It is important to note that the family column considers only samples tagged with families that appear in the taxonomy. However, unknown tags most often correspond to the families that haven't yet been added to the taxonomy and should be considered for family tagging for family tagging results. Here are the top tags in the subset for each category, ranked by the number of samples assigned by the tags. The top five tags include the platforms like Windows and Android, but also if a sample is, for example, packed. Classes capture the popularity of potential unwanted programs, downloaders, and monetizing through advertisements. The top three behavior uh, tags correspond to expansions from class tags. 
from downloader to accept download, various to file modify, and worm to self-propagate. Top families have lower prevalence than top classes, file properties, and behaviors. We also evaluated the update module. When we first ran the labeler, we observed that 65% of samples contain an unknown tag. To reduce this number, we ran the update module and it introduced hundreds of taxonomy entries and tagging and expansion rules. Then we run the labeler again and the unknown tags were reduced from 65% to 16% of tags. We also compare the results with the latest version of the state-of-the-art tools, AV class and euphony. Due to the lack of time in the presentation, we refer you to the paper for the details. To sum up, we presented AV class 2 which automatically extracts tags from AV labels that categorize malware samples according to their malware class, family, behaviors, and file properties. It uses and builds an open taxonomy that does not use a closed set of tags and thus can handle new tags introduced over time by AV vendors. It was evaluated on 42 million samples from 11 datasets and it is open source. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. And if you have any doubt, I'll be glad to answer your questions.